In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to do to set up your charts to be relatively successful at trading. I'm not going to edit this video in any way, shape or form. I'm just going to look at a naked chart. I'm going to add indicators and I'm going to show you how to find trends, how to find these pivot points, how to find those trend reversals and why they're happening, all of the stuff. So let's get into the charts and let's see what we got. Okay, so I've already done the first step, and that first step is always to change your candle colors from red and green to something more neutral. This is a psychological effect that red and green have on people that I want you not to do while trading. So what you wanna do is just right click the chart, click on settings, and then go to appearance, no, symbol, and you will see uh, body borders and wicks. I like to change them from red and green to yellow and white because it's just better. It's easier on the eyes. It keeps you less stressed out. And I promise you, once you do this for a while and then you switch to a red and green, you're like, oh, wow. Like you'll see the effect. You'll feel it. The next thing that you're going to want to do is zoom out to the one hour or the four hour chart. Basically, you're trying to find huge pivot points in the price, and the higher the time frame, the more valid these pivot points are. So when you're looking at areas like right here, right here, all of these, look all the way to the right and see at what price that happened. Banks want to trade at big round numbers. These are typical... They call them psychological levels, bank levels, whatever. So you're going to look at this pivot point right here where the price came down and rejected up quite aggressively and then look left and you'll see that it was an even number, 0 0.7000. So what I want you to do is take a horizontal ray tool, which you can find here in the toolbar. I have these all added as favorites. I have a long position, a short position, date and price range, a brush, a rectangle so I can drop boxes, Fibonacci retracements, which I will get into later, trend lines, horizontal lines, vertical lines, arrows, uh, the cross icon thing, this thing, the clicker arrow, and then a horizontal ray. This tool will let you just shoot a line straight across your chart to the right from the point where you click it. So let's just put it up at 7,000 even and keep going from there. Um, you'll see this point right here was at about 7550, 75500. Look, 75550. Like nice nice even round number. So, click that area and then just keep uh, just keep going to the right. I I want you to move your chart all the way back, like not all the way back. Back far enough to where you'll have relevant price action in that area. So right here, we had another area just below 7,300. I'm going to click it. Right here, again, another low. Click that thing. Right here, this area I mean, obviously you want to do the, the absolute bottom, right? But this area, I want you to draw a box around because like price consolidated pretty heavy in that area, right? So just, just keep in mind that this would be, for me, a no trading zone. I mean, maybe you can trade the tops and bottom of this range, but better to stay away from it. Um, so now we have all of these price levels, right? And then what you can do is uh, draw trend lines because trend lines make sense. A lot of people get the wrong impression of trend lines. <laughs> this really bothers me. They're like, oh, I because I always say the trend line should be at a 45 degree angle. And they're like, well, it depends on the scale of your chart. Yeah, that's true. But if you get all the candles in the area and then you double click on where the price is on the chart on the right hand side, it'll even it out. So that's like the standard aspect ratio that it should be at, right? So I want to draw up my trend lines. 
at 45 degree angles. Right? Like you could see them very, very clearly. If I could just use my brain properly. So you can clearly see we were in a downtrend. We broke that downtrend and then we were in an uptrend. We're currently still in that uptrend, even though Australian dollar, US dollar had a huge kadunk. So what I'm looking at here to see if it will break this area is I'm going to draw a rectangle at this zone and know that this is a potential liquidity zone, which could have maybe brought the price down here to where it wants to reject this uptrend and start a new downtrend. But we don't know that yet. Remember, you want to make trend lines at a 45 degree angle. It's about 45 degrees. That's uh, about 45 degrees. Cool. So that's what we're looking at from this point, if that's the potential. But the only way to know for sure is to see if this area on the one hour was a divergence. And you guys know that I like to use the RSI. So adding the relative strength index, you can use any RSI that you want. Um, we have an indicator. Actually, let me show you. We have a new indicator called any oscillator, uh, any oscillator underlay. Um, it's made by the company that I helped start the trading floor. Uh, you can add that onto your chart and it'll give you eight oscillators, which is awesome. So if you want to use the RSI or the MACD at the same time, you can do that. So let's just, let's just use that one instead of the standard RSI go into settings. Um, I want to only include the RSI and the MACD. It takes a while to load because it's a pretty dense code. So um, got MACD and RSI. So at this point, remember I was talking about this zone to see if this was just a liquidity grab. You want to check for a divergence right here. So what does that mean? That means that this area was a high, this area was a higher high. What you want to do is look at your oscillators and see if this high made a divergence on here. So Sorry, I'm just going to use the regular RSI because it will be way easier for the people that uh, are new because I have a lot of new traders coming to watch me on this channel. Um, so yeah, we had a high point right here and a high point right here. So that is not a divergence at all. What you can do is pop it out even further to a four hour and get a better idea. Now we can see that on the four hour chart, we did have a divergence. So looking at the high here and the high here, divergence, 100% because price made a higher high, yet RSI made a lower high. So now that we've made that divergence, we've come down to our trend line and we're dancing on it. We don't want to trade in these zones. We want to wait for price to break this downtrend and either reject off of this uptrend line, sorry, break the uptrend, break that, reject off of it and create another high point here that's going to be a lower high, which means a break of structure. So we had, you know, a high, a low, a high, a low. 
This is market structure, higher highs and higher lows. So you, what you want is for it to stop making higher highs and start making lower highs. Once that happens, and that's at approximately a 45 degree angle, you can start looking at short positions. But until that happens, you must assume that this price will maintain its upwards trajectory and keep going on an uptrend. And what are your price targets in these areas? You guessed it, these lines that we drew up earlier. So if it maintains this and breaks this previous high point with no divergences, we're looking to trade these areas. So right now, Australian dollar, US dollar is not in a trading area for me. It's very, especially after NFP, it made this huge, you know, could dunk down. So once you start figuring out which direction price is going, uptrend, downtrend, that is the only time that you can take it down to a smaller time frame, like the five minute or the 15 minute. If you're still new to trading, I would stick to the 15 minute because it's more casual, right? It's a lot less stressful candles take a long time to form the candle formations themselves mean more and carry more weight at 15 minutes than they do on the five minute chart so already you can see here we had a big downtrend on the 15 and then we're starting to break that downtrend and go in the uptrend so taking it down to the five minute you can see a lot more noise which is why I still suggest you use the 15 minute. But essentially, what you want to do is look for market structure, breaks of highs, breaks of lows, and use support and resistance areas. So right here, you can see price came down, shot up. This area right here is now a zone. So we had that divergence, we broke, that support level then used it as resistance and now it's coming down so if it rejects here again and then breaks that trend line that's when you can start using it that's when you can start seeing that it's going to potentially be a downtrend the way that you can tell on these rejections of a support and resistance level is check the RSI to see if there was divergences. So with this high and this high, you can see the divergence. It made a higher high and yet on the RSI made a lower high. So when you're picking which direction you want to trade, because that's the most important thing is picking the direction. These are the things that you want to think about, okay? And once you've you're done thinking about all this, this is why trading on a higher time frame is much better because you get time to analyze what you're doing. So when I hop onto a chart, you know, it's Monday or Sunday night and I want to analyze where the price is going to go, I'll delete everything off of my charts and get a clear perspective so I don't have any biases which still I have biases. But once I've decided that yeah, it's in a downtrend and until it shows me otherwise, I'm going to be trading this. Currently, it's in an uptrend on the one hour. So I would still be counting this as an uptrend. Um, and what you want to do, once you start seeing good, smooth price action, I don't, I want you guys to avoid this choppiness right here. See how it's not really showing any specific trend? I want to show you an area where you're getting nice, even higher highs and higher lows, like this area. This area right here is showing me a nice uptrend, higher highs, higher lows, really smooth, really consistent. You're not going to get the perfect zigzag lines like you see on all the trading books. It just doesn't exist. But what you can do at these points is look for either divergences or overbought and oversold areas on the oscillators that you're looking at. So once we broke this zone, you know, we used it as resistance, broke through it, and then used it as support. 
Once you get areas like this, then you can start looking for candle formations like a three line strike or a engulfing doji, morning star, evening star, the candle formations that I explained. I'll link those videos at the end of this one because they're actually really good candle formations. Um, I want to give you all free indicators. Um, what can we use here? Ah, three line strike, obviously. So three LS, I think you can say, yeah, three line strike, um, like TTF. And you can see once we broke through this area, you want to look for the three line strike at this zone. So you got one right here. If we took a long position there, right? And because we're looking at, I, I know I like to do 10 pip stop loss and 20 pip take profit, but when you're, that's when you're getting like an actual pivot point, you know, from a higher high and a higher low, not when you're rejecting a support and resistance level. What you want to do is look at this support and resistance level and avoid being capped out. Like you, you'll see, we had a low right here and then it dipped below that. So you know that this was the liquidity grab off of this wick right here. So what I want you to do is put it below this one. That area is going to keep you nice and safe. And then you want a one to 1 1.5 or a one to two risk to reward. Anything more than that is not scalping, right? And we're on a five minute time frame here. So this trade ended in what? two hours, which is not bad. Um, obviously you could have held it more. I know a lot of people like to talk about trailing stop losses and getting the most potential out of a move, but dude, I've been screwed over so many times holding a trade for two days that I just, I don't like, I don't like it. So you could see the potential if you hold and, you know, just maintain market structure, but there's specific things like support and resistance levels checking your trend lines, breaks of those trend lines. Those are the things that you want to be focusing on. The main thing I want to get and portray in this video is just figure out where your trend is on the higher time frame, the one hour, the four hour, find the trend, find your support and resistance levels. And then you don't have to worry about, oh, I should I go long or short? You know that if you're in an uptrend, you should only be looking for long opportunities. And by long opportunities, I mean rejections off of support and resistance levels, breaks of previous structure. Hold on, let me take that out to the 15, right? So like we're in an uptrend, rejections off of trend lines, breaks of previous highs, you always want to get it on the swing down and then as it starts swinging up at these areas, there's always something that happens. Either the RSI is oversold or you're getting a hidden uh, bullish divergence or you're getting a three line strike or you're getting an a doji or an engulfing candle of any kind. These are the areas that you want to be looking for. So I know this video is not as structured as my previous videos, but I just want to give you an idea of how I see charts, right? When I get on the charts, what do I do first? It's higher time frame, support and resistance, find my trends. And then I can start weaning down into the smaller time frames. Because if you immediately go to the small time frame and you remove all of your drawings, right? And then you see this and you're like, oh, well, no, we're in a downtrend. 100% price is in a downtrend. I'm only looking for shorts. And then once you get into a short, it starts going the opposite way because overall uptrend, okay? When you find the trend, try to stick with that as much as you can. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, that's yeah, that's all I got to say. Like, subscribe, whatever. If you want to watch the videos about the candle formations, I have two videos, bearish and bullish. You can start with this one right here, and then that will lead you into the next one. Thanks so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.